Good morning, dear students. I hope you have very well watched the, tea, the video of the previous chapter, that is the last spring, which I have taken for you from your book, Flamingo. Now, after discussing the questions of the chapter, I'm planning to take the next chapter for you from Flamingo itself. the very third prose that is deep water regarding the extra questions very soon you will receive the extra questions but after at least two chapter gets over coming to this chapter deep water now what is this chapter all about when we talked about deep water this much idea you might have already got that is something related to water many of us are there who are having fear for water but my dear students fear for what is not the reason the main reason is the word fear actually in human life the entire fear is of that word fear and that makes the condition worse here in deep water the author of which is william douglas basically this chapter is about his experience his aversion for water in his childhood he had encountered an incident which left a deep mark of dislike fright in his heart for water which worsened with an another incident that took place in his childhood itself but then remember one thing if you let fear overpower you you will always be a slave to it but the most important thing is to master that fear remember the greatest fear is fear itself and it is our determination our will power which god has blessed humans with that we can overcome this fear and live our life out of this fear very far away from this fear in everyone's life everyone's life one or the other fear do exist just we have to fight to overcome it Now let's come to this chapter deep water. As I told you, it's about our author's experience which he shared with us. William Douglas, born in 1898, died 1980, was born in Maine, Minnesota. After graduating with a Bachelor of Arts in English and Economics, he spent two years teaching high school in Yakima. However, he got tired of this and decided to pursue a legal career he met franklin d roosevelt at yale and became an advisor and friend to the president douglas was a leading advocate of individual rights he retired in 1975 with a term lasting 36 years and remains the longest serving justice in the history of the court the following excerpt is taken from of men and mountains by william o douglas it reveals how as a young boy william douglas nearly drowned in a swimming pool in this essay he talks about his fear of water and thereafter how he finally overcame it notice how the autobiographical part of the selection is used to support his discussion of fear as i said The story is about William Douglas himself. He was born in Minnesota and after he did his graduation he uh, became a teacher and he taught in high school for quite a time but then he was not that much interested in teaching and he decided to continue or pursue a career in the judiciary uh, section. when it comes to judiciary section it has been said that he became the adviser and friend to the then president franklin d roosevelt of yale 
and then he became the advocate of individual rights in 1975 he got retired and he is been marked to have the longest uh, period of working in the judicial section around some 36 years and then he started writing down and when he started penning down his words to create this autobiographical book of his Uh, one a book that is of men and mountains from which this excerpt has been taken to be included in your syllabus he spoke about one incident which happened with him uh, in which he nearly drowned in a swimming pool and then he talks about the way he tried to come out of this fear of water which persisted in his life and devoid or you can say that uh, which made him to uh, stay far from the things he desired to do most and then this autobiographical selection in your syllabus is really going to tell us about fighting fighting to overcome our fears so let's continue with the chapter it has happened when i was 10 or 11 years old i had decided to learn to swim There was a pool at the YMCA in Yakima that offered exactly the opportunity. The Yakima River was treacherous. Mother continually warned against it and kept fresh in my mind the details of each drowning in the river. But the YMCA pool was safe. It was only 2 or 3 feet deep at the shallow end and while it was 9 feet deep at the other, the drop was gradual. I got a pair of water wings and went to the pool. I hated to walk naked into it and show my skinny legs, but I subdued my pride and did it. From the beginning, however, I had an aversion to the water when I was in it. This started when I was 3 or 4 years old and father took me to the beach in California. He and I stood together in the surf. I hung on to him yet the waves knocked me down and swept over me I was buried in water my breath was gone I was frightened father laughed but there was terror in my heart at the overpowering force of the waves okay as you can see in the paragraphs read out by me that our narrator and the author William Douglas he speaks about one incident which took place with him when he was around 11 or 10 years old actually at that time he decided he need to learn swimming and there was one pool in the ymca maybe a club in yakima where he can go for learning swimming at the thing is that the yakima river is considered to be very dreadful and his mother every now and then used to remind him about the number of death that had taken place because of drowning in the yakima river this somewhere forced him to learn swim to learn swimming was a must he understood so he decided to go for the yms here the pool seems to be safer than the river because at the shallow end it was just 2 or 3 feet deep whereas at the deeper end it was 9 feet deep but the dropping down was little gradual and then as a person need the things for learning swimming he had a pair of water wings and the problem was that he has to walk about in his trunks for swimming and he hated people looking at his skinny legs he seems to be very thin and fragile but then you cannot go in full clothes into the swimming pool every one of us know that so he subdued he overcame all this uh, things and this dislike and this uh, shyness and he decided to control his pride and he decided to go and learn swim the thing is that from the very beginning of his childhood he has developed an aversion to water reason now the reason the reason was that when he was just 3 or 4 years old 
his father took him to the beach of California. You also might have visited the beach of uh, various, various places which are there in India and you know that when the high waves comes, how it knocks a person down, means it uh, just literally not drowning but still a person goes underwater breathless, frightened. And he was just merely three or four years old and there on the beach side he was standing with his father hanging close, clinging to his leg but still a wave came and knocked him down. It overpowered him. It drowned him, not drowned but the water was flowing over him and he became breathless and three, four year old child, he got totally frightened. He thought that I'm dead. Then he realized how powerful water was. And from that moment onwards, though his father was laughing, definitely his father was uh, very uh, consciously watching everything. He wouldn't let anything happen to his son. But still, he was just a small child, three to four years old. He got frightened. And from that time onwards, that aversion had made a place in his heart towards water. My introduction to the YMCA pool, swimming pool, revived unpleasant memories and still childish fears. But in a little while, I gathered confidence. I paddled with my new water wings, watching the other boys and trying to learn by aping them. I did this two or three times on different days and was just beginning to feel at ease in the water when the misadventure happened. Okay. When he came to the YMCA club, to the swimming pool of YMCA, uh, seeing water again, the old memories resurfaced and it somehow still means it moved that fears, it brought back the fears when which he had suffered, which he had felt when he was just three or four months, uh, four years old. But then, uh, gradually, slowly, slowly, he gathered his confidence and he decided he need to go into the water. He was already having the water wings. So getting into the water, he pedaled with the help of pedal. You might have seen the people, the amateurs learning swimming. So he pedaled with the help of uh, the water wings. Uh, watching the other boys who were uh, swimming over there and by aping them, by copying them, he was trying to learn swimming. He did this different different days, sometimes twice, sometimes thrice and he was just about to overcome that fear of water uh, which has developed inside him when he was just three to four years old. Suddenly, a misadventure took place. And accidental incident happened with him. Now what was that incident? Let's see that. I went to the pool when no one else was there. The place was quiet. The water was still and the tile bottom was as white and clean as a bathtub. I was timid about going in alone. So I sat on the side of the pool to wait for others. Let's see what was the incident all about which again left a deep mark in the heart of this 10, 11 years old child. It so happened that that particular day, when he reached, there was nobody around the pool. The place was very quiet. The swimming pool bottom, which was having tiled bottoms, means tiles were there. It was looking very clean and because white tiles were used, white and clean, it was looking like a house bath. He felt little timid about going in alone, means he was little frightened to go inside alone. So he decided, let me wait for others to come. I had not been there long when in came a big brochure of a boy, probably 18 years old. He had thick hair on his chest. He was a beautiful physical specimen with legs and arms that showed rippling muscles. He ate. Hi skinny, how would you like to be dubbed? Now while he was sitting down at the corner of the pool waiting for someone to come so that he can continue with his swimming lessons, no one came but one person came. He was a boy somewhere of 18 years old and big brochure means 
uh, the kind now who bully the other people, the other types. Uh, and then he had thick hair over his chest. And William Douglas, he says that uh, basically uh, he seems to be a very good specimen, example of a physical beauty in men with his legs and arms, with rippling muscles, means nice muscles he had created with his maybe exercise and all. And seeing Douglas, he shouted from far, hi skinny, skinny you know, the one who is very thin and lean, not uh, means very uh, skeleton type of look. So he shouted from there, hi skinny, how would it look like or how would you like to be ducked, to be ducked means to be inside the water. Saying this, what he did you see? With that, he picked me up and tossed me into the deeper end. I landed in a sitting position, swallowed water and went at once to the bottom. I was frightened, but not yet frightened out of my wits. On the way down, I planned. When my feet hit the bottom, I would make a big jump, come to the surface, lie flat on it and pedal to the edge of the pool. When this boy, the brochure fellow, he called him and he said that how you would like to be inside the water, to be thrown inside the water. At that time, without giving him a chance or a moment to think over, he just picked up William and then he tossed him, means he threw him at the deeper end, nine feet deep, you remember, at the deeper end of the pool. Poor little Douglas. This Douglas, he was in a sitting position near the pool, edge of the pool. In that position itself, he just started going down in the sitting position. And poor child don't know how to uh, swim. So because of that reason, he swallowed water and at once he started moving down towards the bottom of the pool. He got frightened. But he says, I was not yet frightened out of my wits, means his brain was still working. And then when, while he was going down to the bottom of the pool, he made a plan. He thought within himself that as soon as his feet will hit the bottom, he will make a big jump. He will give his body a big push and then with that push he will come all the way up he will to the surface of the water, he will lie flat on it and then he will pedal and go to the edge of the pool. Okay, so he has created a strategy within himself that this is the way how I will be doing it to come out of this situation. It seemed a long way down. Those nine feet were more like ninety and before I touched bottom, my lungs were ready to burst. But when my feet hit bottom, I summoned all my strength and made what I thought was a great sprint upwards. I imagined I would bob to the surface like a cork. Instead, I came up slowly. I opened my eyes and saw nothing but water. Water that had a dirty yellow tinge to it. I grew panicky. I reached up as if to grab a rope and my hands clutched only at water. I was suffocating. I tried to yell, but no sound came out. Then my eyes and nose came out of the water, but not my mouth. Okay, this little boy of 11, when he was thrown into the water or tossed into the water by that 18 year old boy, just for fun's sake, he went down. He don't know how to swim. He went down but still he kept his senses alert to make a plan to jump as soon as his feet touched the bottom of the pool. And then while he was going down, he felt like as if though he was on a long journey. The nine feet seemed to be like ninety. But as he was about to touch the bottom, before that he felt that his lungs are going to burst. Like as if though he cannot breathe. But still, as I said, he kept his senses alive and the moment his feet hit the bottom, he collected, summoned, he collected all his strength and 
according to him what he thinks that it was the a uh, great spring means a great push he made upwards he did so he thought that when he will give his body a push his body will act like a cork you know how cork is when you bring cork to the bottom of the water and you leave it jumps and it lies flat on the surface of the water he thought his body also will do the same way but instead of that when he gave himself a push he started moving up but very slowly and when he opened his eyes he was shocked because he could see only one thing and that was water with a kind of a yellow uh, kind of a, a tinge touch in yellow color everywhere only water and he panicked he frightened he was totally frightened he like how it happens when you are about to fall you look out for a support he also did the same thing while he was going up in a very slow motion he tried to grab something like a rope or a rope or a ladder or something of that sort so that he can catch with the hand but when he did so only one thing came in his hand and that is water he started feeling suffocation he wanted to shout no sound came out his eyes and nose came out of water but mouth was still inside my dear students this is what he was fighting for in this further when we will continue the chapter we will see his journey of fight the journey or you can say that the fight to live in which he succeeds or not that we will see in the coming up videos till then take care goodbye